tell you, plant friend, Kokodama have really snuck up on me. I originally wasn't very into them, but I made one, and I've been displaying this particular Kokodama in my house for a while, and I have to say, I've kind of fallen in love with them. They are this really nice way of adding some whimsy to your plant collection, an added layer of nature, wrapping your plants in moss, another living thing. It feels so special. You can display them in different ways beyond pots. I love it, and I want to teach you how to make it, so welcome. Growing joy. Kokodama plant friends, let's make some, shall we? Welcome to Growing Joy with Maria. I'm Maria, your new best plant friend. I help the world care for plants successfully and grow more joy in your life. I am so excited to be leading us through a Kokodama workshop in partnership with Espoma Organic, my favorite soil company. Their soils will be supporting the crafting of these beautiful, whimsical, amazing balls. So Kokodama actually translates to moss ball in Japanese. This tradition of Kokodama of wrapping plants in moss balls dates back to, I believe, the 19th century in Japan. It's just such a fun, unique way to display your plants. You can either put them in a saucer or hang them. Hanging a bunch of Kokodama from your ceiling with plants just like tumbling out of them. I mean, talk about the whimsy of that, right? I'm sure you've probably seen these in your local plant shop, probably on Instagram, and maybe you want to try one. I was shocked at how simple it was to make these, and I want to lead you through a really easy Kokodama tutorial. So let's talk about materials. What you're going to need for your Kokodama is hydrated moss. You're going to want to get sheet moss. It's going to come dry and you're going to rehydrate it in water. Um, it's best if you can rehydrate it in these existing sheets. It's going to make wrapping the Kokodama ball much easier. You're going to need some snippers. You're going to need fishing twine. Fun fact, I live in Trout Town, USA. So fishing twine is all over, or I guess fishing wire is all over my town. We're a town full of fishermen. Um, this is what's going to keep the ball together, and it's also going to be invisible, so you get that ball kind of aesthetic with nothing else. You can also make your Kokodama. I made this Kokodama with baking twine. I made it because I wanted to show you how we actually make all of the wraps. Um, I wasn't sure if it would look cool, but I do think the twine has aged kind of really beautifully as it's kind of soaked and kind of become part of the moss. So this is another aesthetic that you could try. Um, and then we need a mixture of potting mix and orchid mix and or bonsai mix. So basically we're going to make a nice mud ball, wrap it in moss, our plant's going to be in the middle of it, and there you go, you have Kokodama. It's very simple. So let's get started. Let's play with mud. In my book, Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness, I say that plants are the new mud pies. So when you're a kid, you get to play in the mud and like make mud pies and have feasts with your friends in the woods or backyards, you know? And then when we're adults, we don't get to play with mud anymore. We don't get to get our hands as dirty. And I think one of the reasons why we're so attracted to plants is because we get to get our hands dirty again. We get to have that feeling of, you know, potting mix under our fingernails or garden soil under our fingernails. And the beauty of Kokodama is we're literally going to make some mud right now. The way that we make your Kokodama mud, you want it to be a little denser. You want it to be sticky. You want it to be wet when you're making your Kokodama ball. So I have Espoma Organic, Orchid Mix, and Potting Mix. We're going to mix this together until it hydrates and becomes a mud. I don't know why. This is just so fun. I love getting the mud under my fingernails. You can make it a mindful moment. I'm going to take my watering can. I think this mud needs to get a little bit more hydrated. And while I am making this mud, I want to take a minute to say a quick thanks to our sponsor for this video, Espoma Organic. They are a fourth generation run company making safe products for people, pets, and the planet. All of my houseplants are potted in Espoma potting mix. All of my garden is potted in Espoma compost and Biotone Starter Plus. I love this company and I love the mud that we are making. So thank you, Espoma. Okay, I'm going to let this continue hydrating. Move this aside. We're going to prep the plant for the Kokodama ball. I'm going to start with this gorgeous Pothos Enjoy that I just got. I actually am thinking that these are going to be really beautiful accompaniments to each other, like maybe anchored on some sort of bookshelf because they're about the same size. They both have one delicate tendril. Um, so I'm going to take this out of its pot. With a pot-bound plant, if you 
whether or not you're making kokodama, it's very important to kind of set the roots free. I'm also going to trim the roots at the bottom. The roots will just keep growing into the soil mud ball that we're making and into the moss. It's going to look beautiful, but I just want to kind of take apart any soil or any roots that we no longer need. There's just two long roots here, so I'm just going to give them a little bit of a prune right there. Trimming roots is just encouraging them to grow, so don't get too scared. All right, these roots have been properly set free. We need to make a moss bowl a little bit bigger than this. So I'm going to start working on a ball of potting mix a little bit bigger than our pot or the shape of the pot. Here we go. You got to kind of squeeze it out. It's okay if it's not all together. It's okay if it falls apart a little bit. It's just more, we're going for the shape here. Let's see. This is about the right size, maybe a little bit bigger. And then we can keep shaping it after. And then I'm going to break the ball in half. Okay. Now I'm going to shake out the rest of this plant. And then you just kind of sandwich the plant together. That's how you make the base of your kokodama ball. And now I'm just going to add it. I'm going to keep shaping and we're going to set it down. Come here, little guy. Okay. Now I've got to clean my workspace before we get the moss going. My hands are kind of clean. <laughs> I kind of wash them. Now it is time to deal with our sheet moss. So the way this works is we're going to lay this moss out. So it's not, it's like a little sheet. And then basically we're going to plop the ball in the middle, wrap it up. So I'm going to lay out like a little bed of gorgeous moss. I mean, how like calming is this moss to your eye? Like, doesn't this feel good to look at this, these deep shades of green? I freaking love them. Yeah. So a quick tip, if you pick up your moss ball and you're noticing that it starts to fall apart, just give it a good squeeze. You want to squeeze the water out. That's going to help keep it form, but you also don't have to worry about this because we're covering it in moss. So no stress. So now I've got my beautiful luscious. I like, I love this color so much. Um, I've got my little moss laid out. I'm going to lay the ball in the middle of the moss. You're going to take the leaves up and it's as simple as folding the moss up and then we're going to shape it in a ball. Now this is where you're going to need to be patient but I promise you, plant friends, it will come together. <laughs> I'm laughing because I understand how bad you might think this looks right now, but you have to trust the process with me, plant friend, okay? So we start squeezing the ball together, and as you notice, it's getting more and more ball-shaped, right? This is where everything is going to change. So I'm going to leave you here. Don't move, little guy, and we're going to get started with the fishing line. This is see-through, right? So all we're going to do is like wrap, 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 and that's where the ball shape is really going to take form. So I'm going to start by just wrapping the middle of the kokodama, tying a nice knot, and then we will begin. All right, so we've tied off the middle, and now I'm going to start while it's seated. I'm just going to like turn this guy just to get a couple of takes around because the more you can just get like the base of the kokodama, like you kind of want to do like a couple around the middle and then you want to like crisscross. You start taking this big piece of moss and making it smaller and smaller. And then that's where you can go in with all of your like more detail oriented wraps to really have it take the shape that you want. And with Kokodama, you can go as crazy as you want. You can literally have the entire ball covered in twine if you want it to look really spherical, or you can choose to leave it a little bit more natural. Um, definitely wrap it enough so that uh, the moss stays in place, but it's really up to you. And that's the beauty of Kokodama. No Kokodama will ever look the same. As you can see, I'm like tightening in the sides first. Now I'm going to start and bring the ball in. I like to have my Kokodama sit in saucers. You can um, hang Kokodama, which looks really beautiful. But just for the way that my plant collection is organized, um, I have them in saucers. So I'm going to intentionally leave my Kokodama a little bit flat on the bottom. You can see this one, the one that I already have is also flat on the bottom. Um, but you could easily just mold this with your hands and make it a full circle if you want to hang it from the sky. 
there we go. She's wrapping, she's going over and over. <clears throat> and this is where you do the detail work, right? Like this little guy is open. So now I'm going to go in and wrap it around there. And you kind of do this crisscross applesauce, one to the right, one to the left, one to the right, one to the left. Now I want to go focus on the bottom, so I'm going to go on the bottom. Now I want to focus on the top. I want to bring, now you can see there's like a lot of moss on top. That's kind of, I actually think that looks kind of cool, but that's not the traditional Kokodama style. So now I'm going to focus on trying to tame the top of it. So you go on the top and then you pull it down and you go on the top. This, this can actually be extremely meditative. I'm going to part this a little bit and I'm going to pull it through the middle of it. And the beauty is no one is ever going to see that, right? But you know that you can kind of tighten it. Like I said, this is very therapeutic. Um, it feels so good to like get all those little stragglers, you know? Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, but then also I found that some of the stragglers that are gone are my favorite parts. So now when I'm coming up here, I see all of these stragglers going on up here. So I'm going to kind of move them with my finger. I'm going to make sure I get them. And we're just going to keep wrapping until the ball has taken the exact shape I want it to. Let's take a look at it. I think I want to press in a couple more in between the leaves. <clears throat> But when it comes to crafts, yes, this is a messy craft, but it's not taking that much time. It's a quick thing to whip up. I think a kokodama could make a gorgeous gift, especially for the holidays. Instead of just putting a gift in a pot, why don't you make a kokodama? Make it feel extra special. You get a personalized touch for your gift. You can give it with a saucer or you can give it with some sort of hanging material. You can hang it from the ceiling in macrame with twine. You could put floral wire through it. So, you know, this is super malleable. You can literally poke floral wire through the ball make a little hook, and then hang it from the ceiling. So the sky's the limit with what you want to do with this. And then to tie it off, I've gotten lost in my twine. Where's my twine? To tie it off, I'm going to do, whoops. I'm just going to do one final, like one around, the side, one through the middle. And then I'm just gonna loop this through another piece of twine that's already been looped, make a knot, and boom, you're done. What did I say, plant friend? Trust the process, right? I bet you thought that the middle of that video was a little chaotic, but that's kind of part of the fun. Um, I love that Kokodama, no two Kokodama are the same, right? Every single one you make, are going to be totally different. You could have an entire collection. This one I used sphagnum moss, so it's a little bit more beige. This one I used this vibrant green moss. Um, you can display them in saucers. So you can take a saucer like this and set it down like that. I have a bunch of kokodama on my windowsill. Like I said, you could put that floral wire through and you could suspend them from the ceiling. How magical would this look if you walked in and there were a bunch of kokodama hanging from the ceiling of the corner, right? Particularly in the corner, if you could do groups of threes, because the number three occurs in nature naturally. Um, I just think it's a magical thing. They make great gifts. When you water them, what I have learned, because it's moss, they will dry out pretty quickly. So keep your eye on your kokodama. You're going to have to water them obviously different than a pot and probably more frequently. The way that I water my kokodama is super simple. I put a bowl of water larger than this, bowl of water, plop the kokodama in the bowl of water, leave it for 15 minutes, leave it for an hour. You'll feel when the kokodama has absorbed all the water in the moss, it's going to get heavy and then you're done. You're putting it back in the saucer. You're hanging it back in the sky. Um, they're shockingly easy, shockingly easy to make, shockingly easy to take care of, and shockingly beautiful. Thank you again to Espoma for sponsoring this video. Any questions that you guys have about Kokodama, please leave in the comments. Tell me if you're going to try this. If you would try this, what type of plant would you try for your first Kokodama? And let me know how you style it. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe, follow. Until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep growing joy.